All right. Welcome to the Austin Downbeat. I'm Kat, your host. I'm very excited to talk to this guy over here, Boone Carter from Gilded Lowe's. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. Yeah. yeah. I'm super excited to be doing this. I first and foremost just want to say before I had I had ever heard you sing one note, I, I don't know what I thought you would sound like because you and I had not met. Mm -hmm. So I hadn't even heard your speaking voice. But then I listened to you sing. And oh my gosh, I've I don't think I've ever heard anyone like you. You are one of one in my that's, mind. That's very nice. <laughs> I I I I uh um, I mean, I'm influenced by a lot of, a lot of people that, that I think I kind of sound like, but a lot of them are not no longer with us, I guess. So I, I just, I, I don't know. I, um, that's, that's very kind. Yeah. Well, you're welcome. I mean, I'm just telling the truth. You have such a, a beautiful speaking voice now that I've had a chance <laughs> to talk to you. And it's so similar to what your, your singing voice is just, um, I wrote down the word cinematic because as yeah, I was yeah. listening to your latest album called new cult old cure, and I was kind of digging around in what you've put out over the years. Cause it goes back to like, I think 2017. Yeah. Yeah. Around then. Around and then I, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I just kept seeing these like movie scenes in my mind uh Definitely. listening to your songs so is that something that you've ever really thought of writing with that kind of in mind or is that just sort of a happy accident because it's really beautiful well thank you yeah I have I mean I've definitely thought about it I mean kind of on the side of all this stuff I've I've had a, a dream of being a music supervisor oh at some point uh just a little bit of like behind the scenes but I, I mean I'd always been playing music and I'd been in what I would call a dark or cinematic kind of bands but uh I don't know if this is giving it away too much but uh, uh True Detective season one came out <laughs> T-Bone Burnett's like all of his music that went through it the the Handsome Family that was kind of where I was like oh I like that niche it's weird it, it I was in I was in New York when when that came out Mm -hmm. And it made me miss like the Southern aspect. I'm from Texas, but I kind of went away from it for a while. But, and while I know that true to Texas season one's in Louisiana, but it, it made me kind of miss that, that like cowboy Western Vista kind of stuff. Yeah. And and since then I've kind of doubled down on it a little bit, adding, adding pedal steel kind of puts That's you in that, that spot <laughs> for sure. But there's such a neat blend because it's kind of like loungy cowboy. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I just don't listen to that music on my own. Like, you know, I think as stepping out of this role and just being a human being and getting sure, in the car sure. and turning on music, um, I don't always tend to, you know, sit outside the comfort zone, right? I tend to just do what's easy and what I always listen to. But there's just something so refreshing when you hear something like when I heard you for the first time, that's just like, whoa, kind of woke me up and also then placed me in another time and another space and another like, and it just was so, so cool. Um, Thank you. Yeah. I like now I really, really want to come see you play. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, it's, 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 we're, we're, uh, we're trying out a bunch of new stuff right now. We're, we're. Right. trying to write a new album so we're, we're road testing a lot of stuff oh very um, but yeah no I mean I've always been interested in making movies I mean I, I went to school in New York for acting and, and kind okay. of became became a producer and, and director and all that kind of stuff so whenever I'm whenever I'm writing songs I'm almost always have some form of a music video in, in my head it's so to me like I don't know if it's uh if it's if it's cheating but I almost just write the whole video in my head and then I'll sing the song from the video in my head usually it, it's making so much sense now I'm so glad we're having a conversation yeah 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 because I just I mean just right away it was just like I can see so much in my in my mind you know I also have a really good imagination and kind sure. of a real active head yeah. like that. I also was a theater and actor mm -hmm. myself. And so I do tend to think in those ways. Um, 
but it's so helpful to actually get to talk to you about it and and kind of see how you write have you always like when did you start playing music and sort of realizing like okay this is this is what I want to do um I mean I think I mean I've been singing since I was a kid it would be like my 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 parents would have me come downstairs and sing Jim Morrison or like the really? doors or something yeah or or I'm sure there's some really embarrassing uh videos but probably since I was a kid yeah um did musicals and stuff but I, I didn't really pick up a guitar until I was about 13 or I think I was given a guitar and then I didn't pick it up for a year yeah and then, and then started started playing and writing um but I had I'd been singing for a while I think I'd been in choir uh, more than more than I remember and yeah. and then um also just musicals and stuff I, I kind of came at it through an actor perspective but then um didn't totally want to pursue musical kind of stuff so I just kind of took everything and kind of made it made it my own I also just love music like as much music as possible I try to kind of consume it so it it, it always it always is kind of like bubbling up <laughs> for me. Yeah. Yeah. From a writing perspective with Gilded Lows, are you doing the main chunk of writing? Is there a collaboration within the band? What's that set up like? Yeah. I mean, it, it definitely started where it was almost all me. Um, uh, probably for the first few years of, of some of these things, some of these songs we're kind of bringing out even now are from, couple of years ago so like a lot of that is kind of written from me um and I wrote most of the guitar stuff but I have recently kind of we've opened it up as a band we all kind of wrote Last Cowboy together uh mm -hmm. Buckley Michael and I so we all kind of collaborated on that that was a, a guitar piece that Buckley had written a long time ago cool. and um and then and then even more recently I've, I've started doing like co-writes and I, I found that that's been really fun and kind of takes my mind off of it and I don't actually know if I'm working on a song for myself or working on it for someone else yeah. but then I'll be like hey I kind of want to try that <laughs> song and then I'll, I'll bring that to the to the band but yeah. um I don't know I, I'd say that uh, it's definitely becoming more collaborative but it, but it does a lot of it does kind of come from me first I'll, I'll bring the ideas and uh and uh and then just have people kind of play on it and see what works mm -hmm. um and I try to curate the sound to kind of fit the the theme I guess yeah um, you do have a really nice string that that you know the nice through line that runs through your songs without it being predictable it's like a fashion mm -hmm. design like down the catwalk you know <laughs> they all belong together yeah but, yeah but they're different enough and I think that that's is that a is that challenging as the writer and sort of you know the creator and controller of all of that do you have to spend a lot of time thinking about that like because I would think it can get a bit myopic writing one song and then you kind of have to zoom out and then when you go to put them together you know what's your experience in in, in looking at things as a collection Th this one's kind of weird because I will the way that I write is I almost always exclusively write in fives yeah. and I write almost five different songs about the same thing oh. so if something's bugging me or, or something like that it I'll kind of have these songs and I'll, I'll just kind of like kind of maybe hyper focus on on that and I never um I know a lot of people can like sit down like like Buckley who's in the band he can like sit down and he's like I'm gonna write every day I've never been able to do that and it, it kind of will take like a month or two or three at a time and then suddenly I'll get hit with it and it'll be like a month and I'll write like five. So that's why a lot of them, they are, they almost naturally theme themselves because oh, okay. they are usually kind of written around the same time period about a similar thing. Maybe sometimes taking, um, taking one point of view in, in one side of the song and the other point of view in the other side of the song. It's a very um, actor thing to do. <laughs> I know I'm, 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 I'm more actory than I, than I'd like to admit. I like that though. I think this is a first really. I've had lots of conversations with lots of musicians and this is kind of a first to see it from this perspective and to have someone, um, I mean, certainly I've spoken to very theatrical people and people with that experience, but 
I feel like it's a little deeper here and it's, it's, it's cool. It's kind I of, I also a- love theme themed albums. Like some of my yeah. favorite, like concept, I love concept albums. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I mean, in a weird way, like going back towards it, like concept albums are, are very scripted. And, and so I kind of feel comfortable writing those narratives and stuff. Yeah. Um, I try to break it up a little bit. I don't want to be fully concept conceptual at this moment in time. Yeah. So, but then it, it almost becomes more like themes or, or, uh, we're at new cult old cure. I feel like there's the thesis and there's an end conclusion. And then the middle yes, is kind of like, I noticed how you did that. <laughs> The, the middle's kind of like uh, more personal, maybe. And then the other two are kind of like bigger ideas is yeah. my my thought. It's very cool. It's very, it's it's organized, but it's like stealthy organization, you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. It, yeah, it's kind of kind of stealthy. Um, I want to make sure people know that you guys are doing a month long stint at the white horse yeah, on yeah. Wednesday nights. And we'll push this out on social media and, you know, I'll make cool. sure to help promote that. So people know, but midnight slots at the white horse every yeah. Wednesday during mm-hmm. the entire month of March, which is a big, we're in <sighs> March right now. It's a big, yeah, yeah. it's a big month for, for music and people buzzing around town. So, uh, Actually, we're talking on a Wednesday night, so you have a show tonight. Well, oh, this is this is the one we we skipped South by because it was going to be crazy, and and there, I'm I'm sure there's some amazing people playing right now. I but, know uh, <laughs> South by is insane. I will be out later for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to decide if I'm going to go out. I'm pretty tired. I think I'm tired from the last Wednesday we played. I, yeah. I still don't. And also, daylight yeah. savings time kind of kind of <laughs> hit me. You know, I'm like a, I love, I love, I love my bed (laughs) just in general. And I love being, I love to go to like an early show and be in bed by 10, 1030. Like Mm -hmm. that is perfect. Those, uh, those hotel Vegas shows have been really, really fun to do for that same reason. You kind of go play them and and hotel Vegas is always such a fun place to play too. So we've been doing, we've been doing some of those and that's been, it's been nice. I think you did a show and I was going to go, but I didn't, uh, with Boer, my pal Boer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and yeah. St. Loretto. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Evan. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Um, next time I won't miss it. Yeah, no, it was, it was, it's, it's been, it's been really fun. And the, those shows are always fun. And then you get to go to bed and then you get to go relatively early or you can yeah. catch the, the second show, which is always usually awesome. Awesome yeah. as well. Yeah. What are your plans for music? So you just released this album that we've been talking about, New Cult, Old Cure. You released it last year. So I feel like it's fair to still call that new. Yeah, yeah. This day and age with our short attention spans and everything on demand, it's kind of, I'm not even a musician, but as a listener, it's kind of frustrating because, you know, I'm still old school back in, you know, uh, 80s and 90s. Sure, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you had more time with an album. You had more mm-hmm. time with it. It wasn't so. Do you feel the pressure to kind of always be releasing music or what's your perspective on it as, as a creator? I, I definitely feel it right now because I've noticed the the exponential gains from putting out a record like all of the good things that have kind of happened with us have happened because we put the effort in to put out a record and and yeah I mean like dealing with like streaming and all that kind of stuff like I I mean it took us a long time in between even even singles we did as a band in Austin it took us like a year to do another single and to do another single and then finally to do a record so um but I'm hoping you know I'll, I'll knock on wood I'm hoping that we'll have music out soon sooner rather than later there's a there's a few things that are kind of in the ether but i mean it would be great to have made a a big impact on another another album like and i also am kind of weirdly encountering that sophomore thing the -hmm. sophomore album kind of thing it's 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 a little intimidating yeah um um and it it's it's kind of a different energy than i've i've felt because the other thing with the songs on new cold old cure some of those have been kind of like road tested and like out and we've been playing it like a hundred times for a few years and so some of these new songs we've only played them for a few times and we're just kind of like taking them out to to try them out and and my hope is that after south by southwest kind of calms down we'll start kind of moving towards recording new stuff 
there's there's some other things that are um tangentially related um I might be doing some features on on some other people's work well, and and uh there's there's a there's a single somewhere out there in the ether that every everybody's getting excited about so hoping yeah. to do that but i i there's something also really cool about doing a record um there's uh i'm i'm trying to write a release schedule right now that's that's the hope that we'll get out of this march thing which has been really fun white horse is incredible oh, it's, and it's been a really right. fun time and yeah. we're we're honored to play it and and we're not and we're not totally a country band so we're we're kind of yeah we're kind of taking a little bit of a risk on us but so far it's been good and we've been writing songs that you can dance to which is uh something my my friend uh hayden butler he, he told me he's like if people are dancing to your music then it's like they're constantly applauding yeah i don't know if he stole that from someone else or that might just <laughs> be his true. quote but but it's uh that's been something kind of cool and 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 something that I, we've kind of leaned into a little bit. You can mm -hmm. sing about whatever I want as long as people can two step to it. Then yes. there's something kind of cool about it. Yeah. I hear your voice. Um, I think it'd be really cool to hear you sing a duet with a mm -hmm. female. That yeah, would yeah. be because your voice, your I'm just kind of keep going coming back in my head. Listening to you talk, I just keep coming back to hearing your your singing voice in my head and like how beautiful that oh. would be with like a Jamie Harris or sure. you know, just a beautiful duet. Okay, make that happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm 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 there's uh I've 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 talked to some people about doing that and I, I definitely oh. think there's there's potential to do that in the future and I'd I'd love to. Yeah, I can totally hear it in, in my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's it is um I, I, I think that there there's definitely voices that can kind of go well together. And yeah, uh, and if you find someone who has an older old style voice or, or whatever yeah. vintage voice, yeah. and then you mix them together, you can kind of get something kind of kind of cool. Magical. Yeah. There's a lot of talented people in, in Texas. So. Throw a rock and you will hit someone with <laughs> immense Who can talent. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah I mean, absolutely. As much as there is to sort of maybe complain about the city, um, I still remain one of those kind of rosy people because I guess yeah. I get, just get a chance to talk to you guys um, and you're included in that of like, it's just, there's so much magic and so much talent. And so far, everyone's also just been so kind and beautiful mm -hmm. and loving and supportive of each other that it's just um like how can you not love it you know so do you feel that in the community do you feel that kind of community part yeah I mean I've I've been in Austin for a really long time I, I left for a while but I, I like grew up here so a lot of my friends that maybe had just like really small projects or maybe we're playing out like I don't know there's even a few people that were in the under 21 band mm -hmm. circuit where you weren't able to you had to wait outside before you played and, and I, I kind of did that I had a band when I was 17 yes. and um but it, it's it's a lot of those people that were either people that were already kind of established and I admired and or like people that were just kind of getting started and then I left for a few years and I came back and they're the they're the ones that are like the top, top billing bands. And, and we've definitely had like, um, we're, I, I think we've been playing for a while, but we're one of those bands that we kind of rely on other people to kind of, kind of give us that, that leg up at times. Mm -hmm. I mean, the one, the one of the people that, uh, two of the bands that like kind of reached out to us first and we're like, y'all are great. Y'all got to open is, uh, Rusty Dusty and and the and also the Juniper Berries. They're like two bands that kind of gave us like a, a a chance and it and it's it's been it's been pretty helpful. So I definitely feel the love. And also like even if people I haven't played with their projects, I still have a ton of friends and I I enjoy their projects. We just haven't played a show yet. It's yeah. it's kind of it's kind of insane how many of my friends or how many in every band in Austin, how I know one or two people probably in each band. Just yeah. from going to shows. Yeah. I mean, it's, I'm kind of the same here just from, um, you know, my experience from a, a little bit different of an entry point, but yeah, I mean, it's so fun 
seeing, scrolling through, um, certainly social media, I get to see who's out there and who's playing. So that's a really good source for me, but it's like, oh yeah, I know that person. I know one person in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Certainly now in, during South by, because yeah. there's so many graphics that give you the info. <laughs> Thank God. Graphics, it's say. so many it's graphics. Helpful, like <laughs> screenshot, screenshot, screenshot. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I really need to sit down with my calendar and just like make a list of the plan for this weekend. But um, but yeah, it's kind of neat knowing knowing a bunch of people and a bunch of different types of bands and different, all different genres of of music. It's it's uh expansive for the the you know for just for me as an individual so I get to hear all kinds of different music including yours which is now you know some music that I really want to listen to when I'm it's it's a it's a total mood your yeah, stuff thank you. you know it really sure. really is it's very very cool and it's different and I love different um so congratulations on on keep going I know that this life choice can kind of be hard you know it's another thing I talk about a lot with people is just the survival aspect as an artist and um so anyone that keeps making art I always just am like <laughs> oh, you, you know we get to consume it for basically free and um <laughs> I just am appreciative of what you do it's a big deal as far as I'm concerned so thank you that's that's really nice and it, it's great that you you do this as well to kind of give people in the in the scene kind of their 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 chance to talk and meet people that they might not have met through through just like the local scene because the one thing I would say is the local scene can kind of be not necessarily insular but it can be kind of like yeah. everybody goes to everybody's show which is is great mm -hmm. but it's like sometimes getting people in who aren't in in bands is is kind of a little bit of a challenge and you have other bands that kind of draw people in it's um you know for the music city part of it mm -hmm. um uh, i think i think it's it's important to try to get people to go to shows <laughs> i agree certainly after covid um mm -hmm. where a lot of people just sort of got used to not doing it mm -hmm. um i think you definitely have a chunk of the pie that we're like i gotta get out <laughs> But sure. I think we lost a big chunk of the pie too. So I'm happy to be able to do this. It's such a pleasure, you know, getting to not only be a small part of, of helping people know about your band and about you, but just also to have a conversation. I think that the human aspect is, is important too. And I think as humans, when we kind of feel like we have a little bit more to dig into and we kind of feel like we know a little bit more about the person, mm -hmm it makes us uh, rally a little bit deeper and a little bit more. Um, so yeah, it's an, it's such a pleasure to get to talk to, to you here tonight. Um, I want to remind people that this for the entire month of March, that they can come see you at midnight at the white. Come on at win, uh, Wednesday at midnight. We're calling it the graveyard shift. The graveyard shift and you get to two step, which who doesn't want to two step? Every girl wants to be grabbed and let out onto that dance floor, whether she'll admit it or not. <laughs> I love it. Well, Boone Spencer, Boone Carter, sorry, Boone Carter of Gilded Lowe's. Thank you so much for spending time with me tonight. And um, I look forward to coming to see you. I don't know if I can do midnight. I don't That's know. fine. That's fine. We've got, <laughs> we've got other shows coming up and, and, uh, Okay. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't know if I can. I, I can't announce any of them. Um, yeah. Well, well, I guess. I guess one of them is uh, March sixteenth. But but I I don't know if it'll be out by then. But it will have passed. But we will we will tell the good people of in in different ways before that. So we'll wonderful, that. wonderful. Yeah. yeah. We we always we always have a show going on, and we're 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 trying to make sure to play shows that we're really excited about with like friends and and bands that we want to play with. So. But we're yeah. always we're I mean we're 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 one of those bands that where we always will kind of have a show, you know, okay. as long as 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 long as we're active and in Austin, <laughs> I I'll I'll figure out a way to get a show. I Almost too many it. shows sometimes. <laughs> then you need to take a, a nap. <laughs> I I probably do at some point for sure. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Um, I will I will see you at one of those shows for sure. Yeah please come out. All right. Well, thanks again for coming on. 
Boone Carter from Gilded Lowe's. And that does it for this episode of the Austin Downbeat. Thank you so much for watching and make sure you go see him play and him and his band. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye guys. Thank you.